right, we're back with the dolls. We're going to do a little quick dolls today. Start with, dare I, dare I start with Poke Doku? This is Poke Doku Master Level Puzzle from the gamer known as Pokemon Brain Rod. Okay, so I'm not really cut out for this kind of stuff, but I'll do my best. The middle evolution of a fighting Pokemon is Machoke. We take those. Now, Hoenn is Diamond, which we know from yesterday is there's Gabite, and then the dude becomes Garchomp. But then in the middle... No, no, no. Gabite is the middle. Gibble is the first one. What? Hank, that was Sinnoh. Hank, Hank. No, no. Poison fighting. I know there... I mean, obviously there is one, but I feel like I can come up with it. Monotype fighting. Easy, bro. Hit him on top. Johto. Okay, uh, no spoilers, please. I'm doing five second spoiler purge. What is Johto? Johto is gold silver. Thank you. Monotype gold silver. Toto deal. Gets smoked. And I don't know who the starters are in diamond and pearl. I'll just level with you. At some point, in, there's going to be a Mudkip. At some point, there's going to be a Piplup. I'm going to assume one of those two must be correct and let it fly. There we go. We got there. <laughs> this is good for me. I know people are going like, Hank, Hank, you don't know, I don't know what these are. Like, I'm literally just pulling like whatever I can from my brain. Okay, I don't know what these are. They're Ruby Sapphire. It, it, listen, it doesn't matter. Okay. Well, then the Mudkip becomes Mud. He, he, I don't even know what this dude grows into. Swamp. Swamper. <laughs> Mudkip. What the heck does he turn into, bro? Froggy. Frogadier. It's not Frogadier. He's a little tadpole. Johto Poison. Johto is Region 2. Crobat. I know this one because I got surprised once to find out that they added Crobat so early. Because I was like, they really ran out of ideas on the second gen. They were like Benny Safdie from Oppenheimer Voice until someone invents a zoo or bat. And then the middle evolution from the Johto region. That's tough because you would think... That it would be like um, one under Zubat or one under Crobat. But there, then Crobat is only a two-step evolutionary process. I got to think, Totodile becomes Feraligator. But in the middle, maybe middle children are onto something. They're always talking about how like, oh, like the, the youngest one is the baby and the oldest one got all the attention growing up and then the middle child's always forgotten. But I like dead ass don't know anything about the middle of... Like when they're a baby, they're like cute and then when they're grown up, they're like strong and they have like an artillery on their back. And then in the middle, they're just kind of like, I'm, I'm a taller baby. Like, goes Totodile, Croc, O, Zik... Tapu Rookie D, Shroomish, Torkoal, Auroris, Scorch, Pangoro. We only have one guest left. Let's be realistic. Who's a purple fighter? There must be one. That's tough. How about a poison r r ruby sapphire? I'm going to say that's Glizcore. Nailed it. I'm honestly like pretty impressed with myself today. Crow gunk. You're right. I, you give me enough to, if you put a gun to my head or if, like, if you put a gun to my head, I don't think I'd be able to do it. Um, what I would say is if you put me in a room and said, you can't get out of the room until you come up with a poison fighter, I would have eventually gotten Krogunk. 
Because fighting Pokemon either are stanced up or they're doing like some capoeira type stuff. And Krogunk's doing the capo. He's like a Jason Kelsey pose. I know he's got his hand down. I can't be too mad about that, though. You had Crocona. It's with a C. Oh, Crocona. Gulpin. Krogunk. Spinda. Slugma. Pupitar, of course. Most common. Most common. Chikorita, I forgot. Granbull. Surfetched. That's a deep pull. <laughs> it, honestly, anytime we ha don't have just Gen 1 and we get like more than three, I'm pretty pleased with that in the whole scheme of things. I can't be too mad. They are knitting baby socks. Hi, Tomo. It's Juno. We're using context clues. Uh, it's an older film that takes place in a European location. It's The Sound of Music, as directed by Wes Anderson. So this is made to look like the Shawshank Redemption. But it is not the Shawshank Redemption, because I don't see a sewer pipe anywhere near this guy. I have no idea what this is. We go next. Oh, okay, hang on. Old John Goodman. This is Barton Fink. This is... I'm not going to know what that is, but I'm pretty sure that's Jennifer Jason Lee. Is this Raising Arizona? Yes! <laughs> next one is going to be Nicolas Cage's mug mugshot. Ah, uh, close enough. Close enough. That's Holly Hunter, though. I do get Holly Hunter and Jennifer Jason Lee and Robin Wright Penn confused all the time. And then you're going to be like, well, Holly Hunter is the voice of Miss Incredible, and Jennifer Jason Lee was in Single White Female, and uh, Robin Wright Penn was uh, the wife on House of Cards. Yeah, I know. I know all that. I just said it to you. I still get them confused. I don't know what you want me to say. Hey, Anel, yesterday I realized there are more framed puzzles if you use Prime. I'm not doing that anymore. I am slow. I, I, pre I appreciate the, the tell. Don't get me wrong. I am unraveling uh, our connections within the tech industry. I am making a separate login for every website. I am not linking it to my Google accounts. I am not using my Prime Gaming Rewards to play today's bonus puzzle only with Prime. They should release it to everybody. I understand that that's perhaps economically naive of me, I'm content to deprive myself of the puzzle in solidarity with my non-prime brethren. By the way, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. <laughs> Step on itis, thank you. Thank you. Corporations hate him. They don't, is the thing, but I hate them sometimes. Not all of them. But some of them. The National Football Association. This Ravens running back made history as the fifth player to ever rush for over 2,000 yards in a single season. Who is Jamal Lewis? Thank you, NFL 2K4. Thank you, NFL 2K4. Now listen, he's no Priest Holmes, okay? He's no Larry Johnson. He's no LaDainian Tomlinson. But he was, he was, I mean, when you got the Ravens defense with Ray Lewis and Ed Reed holding it down, the offense can run wild. A 2X consensus All-American, Kofi Coburn averaged over 17 points and nine rebounds playing for a Midwestern school known as Indiana University. I do not know college basketball. This Western Conference MLS team won the MLS Cup in 2022 and has finished with the best regular season record twice. LAFC, not the Galaxy. The man is crazy. <laughs> Two out of three on sports? 
This American gangster gained notoriety for Chicago. Who is uh, Al Pacino, a.k.a. D.L. Guiga's uh, great uncle? What? I typed Al Pacino instead of Al Capone, didn't I? And I said Al Pacino instead of Al Capone. <laughs> All right, that's Simon Cowell's face. I, I promise I am not, there's nothing untowards here. The first thought I had was that this is Kim Kardashian. I'm just trying to, it's hard to just remove his face. I got, I got some chapstick here. I'm going to put it over his face. Just making sure you can't see what brand I use. I got to go. I don't think it's Kim Kardashian, but I don't have a better guess. Stings. A bunny rabbit is featured on this food brand that sells a variety of products. Annie's. AKA Pepperidge Farm uh, goldfish, but an extra $1.50 a box. Melissa McCarthy starred in this CBS sitcom from 2010 to 2016. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's called like um, My Life. It's, I know, it's like one of the last, like, um, <laughs> like three camera sitcoms, uh, but I don't, I don't know it. Who played Cable in Deadpool 2? Josh Brolin. What genuine si song opens with the lyrics, I'm just a bachelor, I'm looking for a partner, someone who knows how to ride, roar, without even roar. Roar, roar. You've got to be compatible. Every single corner. Life as we know it. Nope. It must be a different one. <laughs> I really thought I got a, a crazy pull at the end there. Okay, I'll, don't even talk to me. Oh, it's Mike and Molly. <laughs> Don't even talk to me about the history question. That's just a brain fart. Mashup. I got to see the mashup here. It is Olivia Munn. I never would have gotten it, but fair enough. Now, if you had Olivia Munn's face on Simon Cowell's head, I would get that any day of the week. But that, that's a tough pull. Mike and Molly... Al Capone, not Al Pacino. And to be honest, I just don't really care about college basketball. They got me on that one. Connections has gone viral. Have you seen this? People posted yesterday, not mine, but like independently, they posted uh, yesterday's Connections, the one that was like true... Vreen, Mellow, and Gru, or whatever, and they were like, the New York Times is trying to give us all schizophrenia. The, it, there were colors with the letter, the first letter changed. We just got lucky because we had solved the other three, so the rest just, you know, the rest just fit together. Frickin' Mint! Remember that? Okay. Forest, olive, mint, these are all kinds of green. A fleet, a caravan, a train, and a parade. Um, what are convoys with multiple vehicles? A procession. Mmm, a procession. Hmm. Let me think about this. Let me think about this. Hedgehog. That's all right. You can remind me tomorrow on that bad boy. I'll pay you Tuesday for a reset. Today I will. Things with needles. Things with spines. A book, a skeleton, a cactus, and a hedgehog. Things with, with, with spines. Things with spines. He's insane. Noble, democratic, sad, erotic. What is my Bernie Sanders fan fiction? What is 
I have no idea, to be honest with you. What blue? Oh, blue! Possible definitions for blue. Am I wrong to take a slight bit of issue with this? I don't feel like blue means democratic. I feel like it could be democrat. Democratic is a... Uh, that I, I associate it as a different word. Like the Democratic Party. I guess Demo, Democrat is short for Democratic. <laughs> they cut two letters off it. It's not blue in the UK. All right, well, when I play Only Connect and I'm like, you know, what the hell are the bishop's knees? And then everyone in England is like, oh, that's what we call like uh, little bits of fish and chips that are left in the fryer after you take the fish fillet out. People are, whenever I'm like, that's not fair. People are like, well, just move to Birmingham for a couple of years and figure it out, bro. Food guesser today, Pharaoh? Absolutely. If we have time. You mean scraps? Bro doesn't know about the bishop's knees. <laughs> oh, man. All bets are off. What earplugs block out? Noise. Instigator on Instagram. Troll. Roman goddess of love, Venus. 122 is the record for humans. Age. Oh, do 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 do! <laughs> uh, like six people in chat were like, he's so cooked. What the heck is Antva? It's on TV, bro. Exciting place to appear, Antva. It's French for on the telly. This shit pisses me off. Weber Genesis 2 E335 gas grill. It's a $499 grill. Here's the thing. It's a little pricey for a grill, but Costco is good stuff for a relatively cheap price. It's not discount garbage for as, as little as money can buy, okay? We'll go $699.99 on that. Holy cow, $899.99. Never mind, they're bending you over. Do not buy this. I can get you a better grill on Wish.com. Now... It will break in one season, okay? But it'll be half the price of something that'll last you the rest of your life. It's the Genesis 2 motherfucker. I forgot, I forgot, okay? It's got the easy release grease trap, okay? It's got the easy ignite switch. It's got the locking wheels on the left side so that it's a little bit harder for someone to steal off your front porch. My Walmart special for 89 bucks is going on four years. I bet it is, but I also bet that you have to pick it up in a special way. Otherwise, that shit's falling apart. Like, I, I bet, like, your, your deck is probably level, but the thing sits, like, not at the right level is my expectation. I just don't pick it up. Fair enough, you know? Are you going to become a solo stove guy? One of the great things about logging off after my stream and then basically not using the internet until 9 a.m. the next morning is I have no idea what anybody's talking about almost all of the time. What the hell is a solo stove? And what is it to the extent that there are guys who are solo stove guys now? Like, I don't know what these are, bro. Front right burner gang? Yeah, yeah, I'm a front right burner guy. I had to think about it for a second. Wait, wait, I'm bottom right? It, bottom right is front right, bro. It came for free with your freaking range. Back left? 
how to get all your arm hair seared off for no reason. So true. <laughs> I mean, if you use the back burners like as your primary burners and you're not cooking four different dishes, like on Thanksgiving, all bets are off, okay? If you're using a back burner as your, as your daily burner, you've lost your mind. As far as I'm concerned, at least. Angola. Um, Ethiopia. It's adjacent to the... Oh, my God. He's crazy. Somalia? Uh, no! South Sudan? That's north, right? Oh, no! What are you, man? Mozambique? Uh, Eritrea. Gabon. Equatorial Guinea. I know it's not this. What am I? Uh, Guinea. Bissau. The Life Aquatic with Steve Bissau. <laughs> Tanzania. Zimbabwe. Rwanda. Mauritius. <laughs> Zimbabwe. <laughs> Mauritania? Oh, fuck. I thought that was Mali. <laughs> well, you learn something every day. Okay. All right. Um, um, <laughs> my dumbass was going to type East Timor. <laughs> I have no idea. Can I can I get a I, I need I need you to save me on this one. Djibouti, Djibouti. Okay, thank you. Djibouti. And their dubs, people. And their dubs. Oh, that's tough. That's a tough one today. Djibouti. <clears throat> this bad globaling is gonna start a war. Who do they think they are? Cowboy Dan. Also, I'll just be straight up with you. If any like soft ass country watches this and they're like, I'm going to go to war with Canada because this guy doesn't know where my ass is. Fucking you're weak. You're soft. You wouldn't have been able to handle the 20th century, quite frankly. Your ass wouldn't have lasted two seconds in 1957 with Dwight Eisenhower and John Diefenbaker at the helm. You would have folded like a fucking origami. OK, grow a spine, you piece. This is, am I losing my mind? This is Ontario. <laughs> this isn't a country. This is, on, this is Ontario, bro. Am I losing it? Myanmar. Bhutan. Is this like the, if this is the Black Sea, then this could be like Azerbaijan? Pakistan. No, 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 Bangladesh. Oh, motherfucker. <sighs> <laughs> I 
Bahrain. I thought that was it for sure. <laughs> Tajikistan. Uzbekistan. I'm lost in Central Asia, bro. I knew it was not Kyrgyzstan. Kyrgyzstan is a little bit more rotund. Feel by rain on your skin, so true. No one else can do it for you. Feel the world with arms wide open. It's crazy how England made the Beatles and then also that song. And I'll just leave it at that. If you want to believe that I'm a big fan of both of those things, then more power to you. She's Australian. Good for her. She beat the allegations. Did you see the, <laughs> the tweet that Sam Mendes is making four separate movies about each of the Beatles and that they're going to interlock with one another, and, uh, which makes sense considering they were in a band together? And then like the, the follow-up tweet that was like, Paul's movie is like, oh, the band sees me as domineering because I'm trying to be a leader. John, oh, I'm transitioning out of being an artist to becoming a peace activist. George Harrison, the other band members, don't take me seriously and don't respect my artistic contributions. And then Ringo's movie is just like the start of Austin Powers, where he's running away from the ladies and like dancing in the, <laughs> in the frame and stuff like that. Anyway, okay, it's 1998. It's pre-Shrek by a little bit. It's a DreamWorks film starring Tom Hanks. From 1998? It's Saving Private Ryan. How much money did this make? 30 million opening weekend July. July is a big movie month, bro. Is it possible this is Saving Private Ryan from DreamWorks? It is. DreamWorks made Saving Private Ryan, huh? Okay. That took a little, a little bit of nuts on the table for me to even feel comfortable pumping that in there. But I know Steven Spielberg was involved with, with DreamWorks, right? Before they just started making Minions movies? Yes, it was his studio. And your head is all the way up it. Sony Pictures, 47 milli. Second week, pretty standard drop off. Starring Antonio Banderas. It's got to be the Mask of Zorro. Timeline lines up. Great movie. Honestly, not, I wouldn't call it underrated. Everybody knows that has seen it, knows it's good. I think people have forgotten that this movie is like actually great. And the sequel, we don't need to talk about it, but it's, it's maybe I wouldn't say underrated, but under, under seen in the modern era. A true 90s classic. And it cleared this Warner Brothers film by 300 grand. This one starring Mel Gibson from 1998. And this is past... Braveheart. I'm going to say it might be the... I feel like the Patriot was like 2000. Yeah, okay. 98, I would say possibly Ransom. Okay, we'll simmer on that one. It could be Lethal Weapon 4. I shouldn't have yeeted so many guesses. We could have tactically used some clues on that one. The faces you love, the action you expect. What an inspiring tagline. 20th Century Fox fell 9%, probably opened in more theaters this week. Starring Cameron Diaz. Oh, it's word of mouth. This is There's Something About Mary. People were like, you know that new Farrelly Brothers movie? It's great. How'd you get the beans above the frank? Bruce Willis, 149 million. This is Armageddon. There's no, it's no contest. One of the biggest movies in 98. 77th percentile today. We, we're, we're in our bag today, except geographically speaking. We will definitely take those. What a weekend at the box office. Something for everybody. Nowadays, it's like nine screens of whatever just came out and then like one screen of a Studio Ghibli movie that came out in 1982.
Al Pacino, if he was in To Kill a Mockingbird? Atticus! See, that's true, but I, I have some issues with you saying that, okay? Because who is Al Pacino going to be in To Kill a Mockingbird if he's not going to be Atticus Finch? Your, your dumbass is going to say Boo, Boo Radley. Oh, really? Because you only see that motherfucker for like three seconds at the end of the movie. And your dumbass probably doesn't even know it's Robert Duvall. Who? For the Godfather? Who? The old guy from Gone in 60 Seconds? He plays Scout. What's Scout's older brother's name again? Isn't he named like Seed or something like that? The world has changed so much in a hundred years. Gem. <laughs> oh, man. Hi, my name is Atticus. These are my children, Gem and Scout. That's good stuff, man. Gen Alpha asked names. No, if it was Gen Alpha, it would be, Hi, my name is Elizabeth. These are my four daughters, Olivia, 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 and Olivia. No disrespect. I know some people are going to go, hey, because you're going to have a child named Olivia. I'm not even saying it's a bad name. I'm just saying it, it is, it's in the zeitgeist right now. Jim Carrey, Robotnik Tank, Sonic the Hedgehog. Okay, all right, never mind. Maybe he's, I've never seen it. Um, <sighs> bugs, Dr. L Looney Tunes, Bugs. The hell is Duke, Duke, Duke? All right, Single Mother Horror, Red Book. Jim Carrey, 23. He's loony, he's, he's lost his mind. All right, never mind. <laughs> Michael Jordan, number 23. <laughs> Michael Jordan, Looney Tunes, Bugs, Space Jam. Space Jam, okay? Brad Pitt, Logan Lerman, Tank, Fury. This is, this is Fury. This is Sonic the Hedgehog. He's Dr. Robotnik. The Babadook. Okay, that's what this is. Babadook. Now, let's think about this. We, we've used a lot of swaps here. I still feel like Jim Carrey, 23, horror, is the connection. Okay, it's not the connection. That's ins they're, they're trying to... You want to talk about the New York Times trying to give you internet adult schizophrenia? What about Sine 2 Nerdle? There's been like 20 red herring Jim Carrey connections, bro. Who the hell is Logan Lerman? Apologies if you're watching. Let's be realistic. I really doubt we're connecting through Duke, Duke, Duke. If we are, then I'm just, I'm cooked, man. I also doubt we're connecting through Michael Jordan. Maybe the red book is what teaches Jim Carrey about the number 23. And then it's Logan Lerman, who's the director of the number 23. Is that, is that correct? Yes, you got it. No, he's an actor. Logan Lerman is an actor. He's like 12 in the movie. Okay. Listen, if you're not Jonathan Lipnicki, I don't know who you are. It's just that simple. No disrespect intended. There's, there's way more people whose names I don't know than names I do. I'm thinking, okay? Red Eye, Killian Murphy, Rachel McAdams, The Dark Knight, Donnie Darko, Thought it might be movies that have dark O in the title. Movies with aliens. Movies with Drew Barrymore. Nightmare on Elm Street. A slasher film with dreams. Slasher film. Slasher film. 
slash your film, slash your film. Uh, it's an interesting discussion. But then you got Spielberg, Spielberg, Spielberg. We, we're, we're Spielberg pilled, bro. Hot swap me. And then maybe we just have, we have movies that feature Batman. The Lego movie, of course. So give me like this. No, 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 wait, hang on. Give me, give me a, because you're, it, it's not going to be, this, this is Spielberg. This is Spielbergian. So the Batman movies are not going to connect thusly. So you got to use your brain for a second, all right? The way you use your brain is simple. <laughs> we want, you are going, eventually we want, I forgot what I was doing. Um, where are we going to put slasher films? We're going to put them, we're going to hot swap you. We're going to run A Nightmare on Elm Street here. We're going to hot swap Scream. Okay, so this is not... The slasher films are going to be vertical. I know, I know we're cooking a little too much, okay? Just, I'm trying to... It's a Rubik's Cube. I'm trying to get it to snap into place. Movies with a, with a prominent bunny. Zootopia. You know what? Okay, fine. Movies with Batman. Steven Spielberg films. Slasher movies. Wes Craven. Wes Craven. Now, am I insane to think that we had the other one? Animated films. Mm, sharks. Bunnies. Murder. Aliens. Drew Barrymore. Movies based on toys. Movies based on books. Movies, Drew, Drew Barrymore. Drew Barrymore. Drew Barrymore. Dude, she's got to be in some of the, they, they wouldn't do as Donnie Darko. She's in Donnie Darko. She's in E.T. She's in Scream. And then she's in, she's got, it's got to be Batman Forever. Drew, Barry, Drew Barrymore's in Batman Forever? Wait, is that Drew Barry? She's cameo. She does cameos in all these films. Well, in Scream, she's very important. And then in Batman Forever, it may be less so. She plays one of Two Face's love interests. Oh. oh, of course. And then she plays the English teacher in Donnie Darko, and she plays the the girl Drew Barrymore in E.T. She plays Sugar. Don't do that. That character doesn't have a name. I don't know. I haven't seen it in a while. I thought Two Face's girlfriend was Maggie Gyllenhaal. Listen, okay. Harvey Dent's girlfriend was Maggie Gyllenhaal in the second movie before he was Two Face. She dies before he becomes Two Face. Ergo, Maggie Gyllenhaal was never Two Face's girlfriend. I can't believe we have to go over this rigmarole every, every single time. Maggie Gyllenhaal also in Donnie Darko. So true. She says, I don't care. I'm still voting for Dukakis. Based, based, based. Now, Hacksaw Ridge to Alexander Hamilton. This has Lin-Manuel Miranda, who's uh, in Moana. He's in In the Heights. I'm assuming. Also, he casts all of the actors from Hamilton in every movie that he has an executive producer credit on. I pers I'm just going to try something. This is a little perspective. I know Hacksaw Ridge has Andrew Garfield, who is in Tick, Tick, Boom, which is a piece of musical theater that has me thinking there might be a connection here. But I'll admit this is a little, uh, it's a little presumptuous. And there might be a Richard Kynes in that, huh? I just thought, oh, there, Christopher Jackson, who's in motherfucking Hamilton. He's actually done it. He's, he found a, a strategic thread instead of just brute forcing it for once. Shortest possible two in 19 seconds.
You will never see this ever again. Clip it. <laughs> I have never gotten the canonical short path. That is a slash moment. Holy, that's one year of movie to movie. I'm vindicated. To be honest, brother, this shit looks like it's straight out of Kali and the, <laughs> or it's, or it's not. I don't think it's Ori in the Blind Forest, but it's the. Oh, never mind. I don't. I have no idea what this is. Skip me. This is. It looks like like Catherine. Mobile PS4 Switch and PC, the world ends with you. Oh, no, no, no. This is uh, Sayonara Wild Hearts. That's a great game, bro. That's a great game. I know Sayonara Wild Hearts. It's the, it's the rhythm game. I did uh, Northern Lion Tries. How do you know the world ends with you? <clears throat> there was a period of about eight years where um, every once in a while, maybe like once a month, an Amazon package would get dropped off at our house and I would open it and see uh, a Japanese video game that I had never heard of before in my life. There are so many JRPGs that I'm at least familiar with the name of the saga and had never heard of before in my entire life. Were you a big Prozac guy going on, growing up? How'd you know? I don't want to go to work. My libido's gone berserk. I don't want nothing to eat. Walking up and down your street. And only two weeks ago, he said he'd never leave me. Bop, bop, bop. Here I am alone. That's strange disease. A lot of people prefer sucks to be true. I'm a strange disease guy or maybe like an umbala charade sort of guy. Probably the most effective ad I've ever seen. I really want to buy like, some gray paint now. This looks like a Mario game. This is new Super Mario Brothers Wii. Nope. It's a hat in time. It's, it's Piku Niku. Piku Niku. Another great game. Kind of like um, It Takes Two. I remember a lot about Piku Niku. What I remember the most is that when you drove the car and you honked the horn, it played the melody for Take On Me by Aha. Game Doll Artwork. This is Mega Man 6. Mega Man 3. I don't think I remember Heart Lady from Mega Man 3. This is Bomberman. Super Bomberman 2. It is Super Bomberman 2. He's really just like kind of exploding them with Reckless Abandon, huh? I'm not trying to, I know like a lot of people have positive memories of Bomberman. I don't know if there's a more popular game franchise that I just could not give le less of a shit about. There's a lot of games like that where they're kind of like sacred cows. I'm not trying to tear them down or anything like that. I swear, you can like whatever you like. Like, I don't give a shit about Bomberman or Sonic the Hedgehog or fucking super monkey ball or like joe and mac and stuff like that it's all for it's for you guy by all means enjoy yourself but just i it's just not for me like people got really really strong opinions about sonic the hedgehog man 
What about Donkey Kong? I was kind of like wondering, like Kate was like, hey, you know, this game comes out next week. And then she showed me like a trailer for Mario and Don Mario versus Donkey Kong. And I was like, what the hell are they doing, man? Nobody wants this. I know I'm not trying to get in trouble, but like, I'm not, like, I get it. Not every game, you can't just be making like another Legend of Zelda like every six months or something like that. But really? It's all right. Just make like Mario hockey, bro. <clears throat> Rip sponsored stream. There's no shot I will get sponsored to play a Nintendo game to begin with. Because I swear. And I don't wear a Waluigi cap in my YouTube avatar. I mean, things can change, but... Mario and Sonic. Sonic the Hedgehog 3. That was my atonement, okay? It may have elements of adventure, and it, it came out after 1994, not on the 360, the Wii, or the Genesis. <laughs> that only leaves one option, I'd say, Half-Life 2. Okay. Turns out you can play this in single player, and it is not a shooter. That's relevant info. Okay. It's, it's got elements of science fiction or horror, but it's not in the first person. That only leaves one option. Silent Hill 3. It's a third person game. We're going to do some math and say it's definitely on the PC, which doesn't really help us. But it does have some co-op elements. And it may have some horror elements. I'm going to say that this is Resident Evil 5. It's a third person game. It's more recent than 2009. That's right. It wouldn't be a shooter. Fair enough. Um... And it may have horror elements. But a little game called The Evil Within 2. Mm, that one has some, some first-person segments. All right, fair enough. And it's a shooter. Who knew? It's, it's very recent, bro. More recent than 2017. System Shock 2 Remake. That's going to give us the game from 1997. <sighs> I'm thinking, I'm th what about, as it wouldn't be Control, because Control is a shooter. Fuck it, hook me up. Fantastic. <laughs> and it's not a shooter. <laughs> Death Stranding, kind of a shooter, but it is a third person. Oh, it came out more recently. It, wait, wait, it has no science fiction elements, which means it must have horror elements. A third-person, fairly recent horror game that is uh, perhaps an adventure. That's real tough, man. For me, at least. A third-person horror game that's recent. Layers... A Fear Original, 2016, okay. It's not a Bloober Team joint. Contains horror elements. Uh, whoa, 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 Lethal Company? Oh, <laughs> I thought I... It's first person, obviously! There's so much wrong with this. Mario and Sonic. Wait, whoa, 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 what about... Um, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I could have gotten that. I could have gotten that. Little Hope. That's the one with uh, Will Poulter and the Salem Witch Trials. I played it. It's tough to guess like games like that because they're so far out of the, the normal genres. Unless you love Sony first party games. Oh, that's true. I guess, I mean, it literally is co-op. But I don't think of it that way. What do you mean by that? I mean, it's a game where you watch movies and press the X button now and then. I don't mean it in a negative way. I like games like that from time to time. <laughs> it 
I'm not, I'm not trying to take a stand or anything like that. I'm just, I'm just asking questions. Hang on, I'm verifying that I'm not a robot. Pick all pictures with traffic lights. There you go. I've done it. Hungary, a geographical name meaning landlocked country. Try to trip me up on the easy words, bro. Scrounge, a verb meaning steal. Scalp. An She's really heavy on the enunciations today. She's going Dakota Johnson mode. Shadow, a noun. Her web unites us all. Harvest, a noun meaning the. Okay, easy mode. Iambic, a noun meaning. A noun meaning when you talk like Shakespeare in 11th grade science class. Mortgage. A noun meaning a... Stimuli. A noun meaning something that... I, th I thought for a second I thought it was two eyes. Okay, so I, I just had to go with my gut on that one. Nanotechnology. A noun meaning the manipulation Sun. of materials on an atomic or molecular scale. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I was doing that this morning. Maritime. A adjective meaning of relating to or border... Could this be the one? Nuts on the table? Rastafarian. A noun meaning an adherent of Rast... Yes. Bibimbap. A oh, noun meaning a Korean dish of rice. Oh, nice try. <laughs> I can spell it backwards, forwards in English and in Hangul. Bibliopagist. A noun meaning the art of binding books. Derived from Greek words bibli... Bibliopagist. One who binds books. Bibliopagist. A sites. A noun meaning when your when your belly's full of goo. Oologist. A noun meaning a person specializing in oology. Oologist. A noun meaning a person. Okay. What is oology? How close were we? Bibliopagist. Ah. <laughs> Eggs. It makes sense. Bro, what's the study? You got a shell, you got the white, you got the yolk. Boom, done. Here's your PhD. Oh, and now you forgot about the albumin. You forgot about the... Nobody gives a shit about the albumin, bro. Nobody cares about the albumin, brother. That's part of the egg white. <laughs> See? This is why I don't have my PhD in oology. 17 O's. Food guesser. Play new game. This is a gimme. This is from... Wow, <laughs> you're getting me in trouble here. <laughs> it's a Cuban sandwich. I would assume Cuba would be a good guess here. I uh, also assume that perhaps... It, it reached the peak of its popularity in Miami, if I had to guess, but I, I got to go with Cuba on this one right out of the gates. Okay, my, the United States would have been fine. You know they love that in Ketchikan, Alaska. Next round. This is from the nation of Germany. This is L.A. Galbi with cream sauce potatoes. It's north of Germany. This is from Sweden. This is from Denmark. Steaked flask, traditional Danish dish consisting of crispy fried pork belly. That's fine. Why, why does every single Danish dish say like it represents a connection to the country's agricultural heritage? Like, is this from the Chamber of Commerce of Denmark? Like, it doesn't matter if it's, if it's bread soup or like potatoes and meat. It's like it has a connection to the... Re of course, it, everything has a connection with the region's history, motherfucker. It came for free with your context of being alive. Chat GPT ass answer. I didn't think Steg Flask fell out of a coconut tree. Don't be ridiculous, man. To me, this looks like Miyokguk from Korea. It looks like a seaweed soup from South Korea. I've got to follow my heart. Wow, it's not even close. All right. I don't know what the olives are. <laughs> Maybe they're olives. Six, 7,000 kilometers away. 
It looks so much like Miyokuk, man. Maybe these are olives, and this is from the Levant. This could be a soup that you encounter in North Macedonia. To the, to the east of that, to the east of North Macedonia. Georgia, the nation of Georgia. Oh, chakapuli, a traditional Georgian dish. Let me guess. It continues to be a beloved dish that represents the rich culinary traditions of Georgia. <laughs> no way, bro. Me, when they put a McDouble on here. But it's true. Anytime I eat like a McDonald's hamburger, I, I do. I feel a connection with mid-century Americans. I'm sorry. I feel like Tom Landry could have been driving a Buick convertible up to McDonald's and eating the same thing now that I'm eating 74 years later, okay? We're all on the same divine thread, bro. We're just further along or further back. The same divine web. So true. I mean, okay, we're, we're moving on in like a minute and a half here. Probably three and a half minutes because I'm also going to go pee after this. But you know me. We're not avoiding movie grid. Today's doesn't seem that hard. Natalie Portman, Julianne Moore. I'm a simple man. I go May, December. It's going to be a big one. Maybe that was the only one. Philip Seymour Hoffman, Julianne Moore. Again, maybe a little basic. You could go Big Lebowski. I personally am Magnolia Pill. Marissa Tomei and Julianne Moore. Everyone relax, okay? Well, think about it. Marissa Tomei, $100 million plus box office run. What Women Want, starring Mel Gibson. Huge hit at the box office. Everyone will forget Marissa Tomei was in it as the lady who was thinking about who's going to be on Jay Leno tonight while um, Mel Gibson was making out with her. Philip Seymour Hoffman, $100 million plus box office run. Along came Polly, starring Ben Stiller. He had no misses in the 2000s. Philip Seymour Hoffman, three or more word title. Big Lebowski's going big here, so we veer off to the side. We go Hunger Games catching fire. Marissa Tomei, three or more word title. I may be forced to go My Cousin Vinny on this. Wait, you know, no, no, no. Julianne Moore, Marissa Tomei, Crazy Stupid Love. Julianne Moore is Steve Carell's wife, and Marissa Tomei is uh, his kid's teacher. Might be the only option. Natalie Portman, $100 million plus box office run. Many, many options here. Obviously, I want to hit you with like a episode one... The Phantom Menace, but we could, there's a lot, you know what, I'm going to pull something maybe a little surprising, and maybe what if people forget that she was in V for Vendetta, you don't talk about that movie that much, and then Marissa Tomei, three or more word title, I'm, I mean, listen, I actually think my cousin Vinny is going to take a lot of heat here, okay, so what do we do instead, we run the middle Spider-Man movie from the Tom Holland era, we run Far From Home. And then, Natalie Portman, three or more word title. Me personally, I think that I got to run um, The Phantom Menace. But there's got to be... I mean, there's, there's Lee on the Professional, but I think that pulls more just by nature of there only being one Lee on the Professional and there being so many The Phantom Menaces. Closer, Black Swan, Lucy in the Sky. Wait, would Lucy, Lucy... Lucy in the Sky might be your play here. He's out of his fucking gourd. He's lost his mind. Nine out of nine, top 2% of players. Oh, baby. Right, we had, well, I was going to say we had none that were most popular, but obviously we had two that were most popular. But still, that's, that's a build different sort of day, bro. That's an ego booster. And you're calling other people on this site nerds? Well, they are nerds. You just have to be a second-order nerd. 
Because if you're a first order nerd, you end up thinking you're like a genius. You're like boogie nights. Have you ever heard of this one? <laughs> you got to be one level of nerd beyond that and be like, what are the nerds going to pick? And then you swerve them. Have you watched all these? Okay, listen, I, how do I close this? God is my witness, hand to God. It's rare. I've seen all these movies except Lucy in the Sky because I heard it was garbage. But I was excited for Lucy in the Sky because it was directed by Noah Hawley who did the first two seasons of Fargo, which is some of the greatest TV in my lifetime. So I was like, how could he, how could he miss now that he's got a movie? And then apparently he missed, okay? So I haven't seen it. But I, yes, have I seen May, December? Yes, yes, in theaters. Yes, yes, in theaters. Yes, yes, in theaters. <laughs> I, why didn't you see Magnolia in theaters? Because I was fucking 10, bro. They wouldn't let me in, okay? They were trying to keep a young thug down. Slash marker. This is the dulls. <laughs>